What's up out there? Welcome back to some more Melver Idol. In this video, I want to talk about um, combat, basic fundamentals of combat. And I'm not going to look terribly deep into this, but this is probably going to be good for your beginning to intermediate player. And there might be some things that old, you know, advanced players learn too. I don't know. Um, hopefully there's something for everybody. But let's jump into this. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the differences between your melee ranged and magic. And there are some things to note here. Um, if you come from another game, say like Diablo, Elder Scrolls, Wizardry, um, I've not personally played RuneScape myself, so I don't know how that game works. And I know this is based on that. So before you jump into the comments and tell me I need to play that, that all of it's there. I've never played it. So just to disclaim that. I have never played RuneScape. I don't know how RuneScape goes. Um, I come from more of a standard RPG background, like I said, Wizardry, Diablo, stuff like that, um, where you pick a class and you play through the game as that class. This is not that. You are going to need all of the melee. You're going to need the ranged and magic. Because when you get into the end game, especially like this uh, Into the Mist, when, once you get into that, there are checkpoints that actually stop and say you can only use melee here, you can only use ranged, or you can only use magic. So there is no, um, you don't just pick one class and run through it. If you followed me on my, my original hardcore character, you'll note that I started off with magic and I said, hey, I'm not usually a magic player. That's because that's the mentality I was in. It Once I hit end game with my standard character, which is what we're looking at here, once I hit end game with this character, I was, I was like, all right, I am way off on that whole deal. So to note, the very first thing to note is that you will need all the combat skills. You will need them all leveled up, maxed out. And then uh, to top it all off, this new impending darkness event, you have to have level 99 in all skills to get to it. So even if you're playing it on adventure, you're going to need everything at 99 to get there. I believe all skills means all skills. Um... So, that being said, there is some nuance to this whole thing, too. I typically say, if I look at my melee side of here, I will typically, you will probably see me refer to this quite often as three skills for melee. And the reason I say that is because stab, slash, and block are three attack styles. And you basically run these up to equip different gear. Your defense gives you... Uh, the ability to equip different armor. Your attack gives you the ability to, to equip different weapons. Your strength gives you more damage with the weapons. So, and then uh, the attack is your melee accuracy. Strength is your melee uh, damage. And then defense, this is something I always say, and I, I, I don't necessarily mean it this way, but it comes off that way. I always say defense is lumped in with these because of this. But if you look at your actual magic or range, they also use defense. And defense is kind of a universal skill. Uh, but the reason I always say that is because um, of this right here. Because it's a separate attack for the melee. Whereas with this, you can actually raise defense with ranged or magic. But it splits it. So you get partial to magic, partial to defense. And I think I used that on like my original hardcore... Um, to raise defense while I did magic. It basically cuts your XP in half. I've not done that with ranged because I think you take a, a, a little bit of uh, a little bit of a hit to that. Um, whereas magic, I saw less of a hit, if that makes sense. So um, you can use ranged or magic to raise defense, but melee only raises attack and strength. And you really don't want to use uh, magic and ranged for very long for defense because it you're get it takes far too long to raise magic or ranged. Whereas once you get attack and strength leveled up to a point, then you can work on defense. And basically, you kind of want to work defense and attack kind of similar because one does weapons and one does um, armor. But you really want to push your strength up as far as possible, as fast as possible, because the way it was explained to me and the way I understand it is your strength gives you more damage. The more damage you do, the more XP you get. So you want to build strength up to 99 first. Now, you're going to probably want to level all these up at the same time. Similarly, but once you get to a point, 
you'll want to raise strength up as quickly as possible and then go with attack and then defense. So strength, attack, and then defense. Because the more damage you do, you're going to hit harder, you're going to generate more XP. And then once you get strength maxed out, you'll go up to attack. Um, you'll have more accuracy, so you're going to hit more often. And that's going to give you more XP, you know, because you're hitting more frequently to the most damage possible. And then you go into defense because you're going to be hitting the most accurately and the hardest. So that's kind of how you want to run, say, level 90 up. Kind of an in-game thing. I don't know that if, you know, your mileage may vary. You may want to try something differently. But that's how it was explained to me. And it seems to work out fairly well. So that's what I've followed is basically if you're going to level up uh for melee, you want to do strength, attack, and then defense. Uh, just a general guide. H, your hit points kind of go as you go. Um, there's nothing you can really do to make HP go faster. You can equip things like the fire making skill cape, which has global XP. Uh, there's some combat. There's a combat XP ring you can equip, but HP itself, there's no real way to boost that. So you just kind of let it go. Ranged and magic are direct. Using them levels them. Uh, so, you know, obviously the more you use them, the more they go up. And like I said, these can raise defense, but I typically wait on defense for my melee character. I let him do that. Uh, they, the defense will benefit ranged and magic, though. It benefits both st all three styles. Um, Prayer and Slayer we'll get into here in a bit, I think. Um, but th the number two thing I wanted to discuss is the difference between standard, hardcore, and adventure mode. Now, standard is your bone stock standard game. That is the baseline that you would play it at. That's what this character is. There's no um, pros or cons to it. It's just standard. That's it. Baseline. Um, hardcore, uh, you have combat penalties and permadeath. But other than that, all your skills are unlocked. Uh, I mean, there's some other little minor changes here and there. Like you don't um, auto heal. Auto heal is completely, I'm, I'm sorry, not auto heal. Um passive health regeneration so if i had some damage here it would slowly heal up on standard and adventure that is disabled completely in hardcore so if you have regen potions uh, i don't have any equipped but if you had regen potions uh these things down here uh where are they at this regeneration potion these completely do not work at all in hardcore so they are pointless they will not do anything you will need them for completion if you're trying for completion, but they don't work. Um, now, the big difference is with um, adventure mode. You can only start, I can't remember which skills it is, like attack and strength, but you only start with combat skills. Um, you only start with a select few combat skills. You have to basically buy into the rest. Um, your non-combat skills are limited to what your combat level is. And there was a little bit of controversy as to whether Slayer was included into combat level. It is absolutely not included in combat level. Um, your combat level is determined by what your most, what your highest um, fight style is. So let's say ranged magic or melee. Melee takes attack and strength both together, whereas ranged or magic is just ranged or magic. Um, so if you have, say, level 50 range, your better, your combat level will be higher than, um, or could be higher. I'm just making up numbers here. So if you have a level 50 range, it could be higher than a level 30 attack and a level 30 strength. It just depends on how, there's a formula that this gets applied to. I'm not going to dive into that part. Um, basically just know that your base is going to be the highest combat level that you have. Let's get rid of this thing before it drives me nuts staring at that. So attack and strength go together, ranged or magic. So if you have a high level magic or a high level ranged, uh, that will supersede these. But if these combine together, then that will be your combat level. Um, from there, your defense, your hit points, and your prayer points. Um factor into combat level. So you want to raise uh, one of the combat styles, whether it's melee ranged or magic, and then make sure your, um, your defense, your hit points and your prayer points are going up. So don't basically your defense, you don't neglect defense. Your hit points are going to go up 
naturally in the background. And then prayer points you want to definitely use because if you don't level these, your combat level will suffer horrendously. Um, there is a tipping point where it just doesn't make a whole lot of difference and you're going to be raising them all at the same time. But you definitely don't want to lose out on prayer. Slayer does not count in combat level. So just to be clear on that. Um, number three, uh, this is just made my top five things I wish I knew when I started the game video. Uh, and that is the combat triangle. So when you're fighting something, let's go jump into this guy here. There is a combat triangle and that is this right here. It's basically rock, paper, scissors. So think, um, you know, rock beats scissors, scissors beats paper, paper beats rock, that kind of thing. That's the example I use. That's probably what they use on their wiki page, I'm guessing, because it's pretty much what it is. Melee will defeat ranged, ranged will defeat magic, and magic will defeat um, melee. You will basically get a, a bonus for doing that. So this is a, a melee character here, or a melee enemy that I'm fighting, and I'm using the magic fighting style, so that gives me a 1.25 multiplier for everything, my damage, uh, my damage reduction, everything gets a bonus here. If I switch over to melee, this is melee to melee, there's no change. I don't get a benefit and I don't get a, a, a reduction. If I switch over to ranged, I'm actually going to take uh, a deficit or a debuff, however you want to call this, so I lose damage against this guy. Um, works for everything. So. You can actually tell if you go up into whichever combat area you're in, it will show you the type of combat you're going to fight. So with this ranged Golbin, I would fight him with melee. I would fight this regular Golbin with magic. Now, early on, you're going to be probably using a lot of just straight melee um, because your you're ranged in magic take ammo, if you want to call it that. Uh, runes for magic and bolts or, or um, uh, arrows for ranged. But... You know, your melee just lets you beat on things and it doesn't really cost anything. Um, so early on, you're probably going to be working with melee for the most part. And a lot of this stuff won't matter. It's once you start getting into these slayer areas, especially once you get into the dungeons and get higher in, uh, you can actually go through the dungeon. And as the dungeon changes, like different monsters, especially like, say, the god dungeons, uh, they may use mostly melee, but then spit in a few um, ranged or magic. And you can actually manually fight the dungeon and switch between your uh, combat styles, uh, especially something like this impending darkness or into the mist. If you sit here, and, I probably wouldn't idle something like that, but if you're fighting it and, and manually going through it, you can switch the combat styles to match whatever you're fighting. Number one, it makes things go faster. You use less health. Um, you use less materials. You can stun them more, do more damage. You know what I mean? It just, everything speeds up. So pay attention to the combat triangle. It's not so much early game, like in the combat areas. This, you can pretty much do all melee for the most part. Uh, if you over level, you can do the wizard tower and stuff like that. But using the correct style will make it work better. Uh, once you get into the higher end stuff, that's when it really starts taking off. And you really need to know your combat triangle. So, number four is going to be gear. Pretty much all your gear, uh, let's see, everything that you can smith up. Let me smith something up here real quick. We'll do a, uh, we'll do something cheap. We'll do a piece of steel gear. Uh, the steel helmet. Oh, I don't have any. Do I have mithril? Do I have mithril? Yes, I do. We'll do a mithril helmet. Pretty much the helmet, I believe it's the helmet, the shield, the boots, the plate legs, and the plate body. I think everything in there upgrades, and they have multiple upgrades. And this is speaking to everything in smithing here. The bronze, iron, steel, mithril, adamant, rune, and dragon gear. This also includes the gear you get from this Black Knight. I want to say everything in here can get upgraded too. The, boot, the boots, the helmet, the shield, the plate legs, and the plate body. So there's five pieces of armor that will upgrade and 
make sure you look for this upgrade button and make sure you have enough silver, cash, and gold. This one's going to do um, upgrade here to this S tier. These start adding damage reduction at some point. Like once they're fully upgraded, they will add some damage reduction. Um, this one adds 3% once you upgrade it to the gold piece. So there's silver and gold upgrades. Once you get it to there, it will give you some damage reduction. This is something I neglected on my standard, on this, actually this account for a very long time. The damage reduction you get from that gear helps you tremendously, even early on. So even if you're getting crappy bronze gear from these Golbins down here, uh, let's see, does he drop some gear? One of these drops some, uh, oh, this shield. You can actually upgrade that shield. So don't sleep on um, upgrading your gear, even early on, because that damage reduction means you're going to use less food, which means fishing less, cooking less, you know what I mean? All that kind of thing. So don't sleep on the damage re reduction you get from that. And speaking of damage reduction, let's jump into number five and just speak to damage reduction itself. There is a potion for that. Um, it is highly recommended if you're going to wade into an area that you don't know. Um, there's also these amulets of defense that you can get, which give you a decent damage reduction. Um, pretty much all your gear, uh, all your armor is going to give you uh, damage reduction. The things that don't, and if I go into bank, I don't think I have anything. The, like the gloves and stuff, some of your gloves don't offer damage reduction. Um, let's see here, some of the combat stuff, like say this throwing power glove. It has no damage reduction. So it's a good glove for, say, throwing knives or things like that, but there's no damage reduction in that. Um, I don't see some of the other stuff that I might have. I think I probably sold it all to make room. But there are, there is one set of gloves and I do not see it. There is a set of gloves that you can get from the Paladin. He drops these Paladin gloves. They will give you some damage reduction. That is a good set of gloves to get early on and use for things like, say, the Spider Forest or, you know, so you can get your uh, amulet of looting out of that. Uh, there's a good reason to use those gloves. They work for range. They work for um, magic. You can use them for, for um, melee also, but you're not going to really get any good gloves until, say, the God Dungeons. So don't sleep on those for damage reduction. Uh, number six, sleep and stun. You can, you can cause creatures to sleep depending on what spell you use. Uh, items you have, you can stun them, things like that. There are two different damages for sleep and stun. If you stun, if you are stunned or they are stunned, they take an additional, you or they take an additional 30% damage. Sleep only does 20% damage. Now, I actually lost my hardcore character. Um, my first hardcore character died. Um, I believe it was in the Infernal Stronghold. And he died because they had made a change to where the stun started doing uh, a percent damage. And I died because of that. And I didn't catch it. Um, my own fault. I should have paid attention. But um, definitely... And they've added a quality of life too. If you're doing combat, you will see a stun move come up and it will show the the, the damage done will change. Um, say it's a 300 point damage and it stuns you, it will change to 330 or whatever. Whatever that percentage is, it will change. You'll see the numbers change over here as you're fighting. Um, number seven. This is probably something that uh probably should have put this on earlier, but... As a very brand new character, the first things you're going to probably fight are going to be plants. You might move into chickens at some point, uh, probably golbins, maybe some range. These are your very basic creatures. So once you get a little bit of skill and you're, you're built up a, a little bit, um, or maybe you've got melee gone pretty far and now you're going to start working on, say, ranged or magic the first creatures that I saw recommended on like Reddit or maybe it was on the wiki. I can't remember, but I see these tentacles and giant crabs recommended. They have good hit points. They don't hit you very often. And this is for new characters um, fairly, fairly early on in the game. 
They don't hit very hard. They have a lot of hit points and you can idle them for a very long period of time. I think they both drop some kind of fish that you can cook up. Um, oops, clicked the wrong thing. So you can actually cook those up and use them for health. So they kind of push themselves forward, so to speak. Um, after that, I don't know, you kind of get on your own for there, but um, those are really good. They have, like I said, they have high hit points. They don't do a lot of damage. Uh, once you get done with, say, once, once things start feeling slow with tentacles, move over to crabs. They'll hit a little bit harder, but your XP should go up a lot more too um, in relation. Now, once you get into, say, level 40, 50, 60, somewhere in there, stop using those. Just move on because you're not going to get, there's not enough bang for the buck. Um, number eight. Now, this one is one that took me a long time to figure out. Let's throw it into combat here. There is chance to hit, and then there is chance to use. And they are not the same thing. And I see people do this, or say this in the wrong way. And like I said, it took me a while to figure this out. This hunter expertise at 40% is not 40% chance to hit you. This is 40% chance for him to use that skill. His chance to hit is 47%, and that's for all of this. If you total this out, and this is a real easy one here, he either does hunter expertise or he does normal attack. There's a 100% chance that he's going to do something. 40% of the time he's going to do hunter expertise. 60% of the time he's going to throw a normal attack. That's how you read that. That's how that works. Um, same thing for... Uh, I don't have a good quick one because I'd have to go into one of these dungeons and wait for a while. But like if you look at the volcanic cave, um, let's see, maybe this one will do it. Do I have? I do. So let's toss this fight in here. See what happens. Uh, yeah, he's just 40 and 60, so that's not necessarily a good one either. Um, let's try Umboras here. What do these things have? And eh, they're 50-50. I'm not finding any. What you want is the ones that have the chance to do. I'm looking for one that has a lot of different things that it does. And I don't think I can find one. I think they're more in the dungeons. Um, does this thing have a few? Yeah, see, it's just 80-20. But pretty much that's it. This is the chance to use the item. And you can demonstrate that real easily. So if I mouse over my attack style, I have an 80% chance of doing blade echoes and a 20% chance of doing tidal wave. If I switch this to uh, this dark steel dagger, this thing has a 100% chance. Uh, let's go fight this guy. And let's watch this attack interval for a second. He's going to use blade echoes. Uh, occasionally he's going to kick out a tidal wave. So he's using Blade Echoes pretty much, and then Tidal Wave. All right, cool. If I switch this Dark Steel Dagger out, if I equip this, he is now just going to do Deadly Cut 100% of the time. Well, well, that's interesting. That changed. They've changed something because it used to be 100% of the time. Mm, that's cool, though. That actually splits. That was a problem that I had actually with this account. I wanted to try this this um, deadly cut thing, and it didn't. I had it equipped with the uh, oh, what did I have the um, the sandstorm ring, and I thought, oh, cool, it's going to run sandstorm every once in a while, and it never did sandstorm. Now it's actually splitting it up. That's cool. They've they've changed something, um, which is nice. So. You can mix the two combat styles up. It's a little one's a little quicker and one's um, more damage over time, so that's cool. Um, I take that back. But the point stands. If you look at the, this is my accuracy. My chance to hit is only thirty five percent. That is not the chance to use the skill. This skill has an eighty six point nine six percent chance to use. And then Sandstorm comes up 13.04% of the time. That's how you interpret that. Uh, that is not your, this is not their chance to hit. 
their chance to hit is right here. So don't make that mistake. Um, is it very useful information? I don't think so. Um, let me get my guy back equipped here before I forget what the hell I had him set at. I don't know that that information is very useful um, because what I'm looking more towards is the name of the attack and then how much damage it does because I'm going to ride the health button sometimes, which is going to bring us into um, probably the final thing for this, and that is the health button. You can click this and it will heal you. You can also click this once and then hold the enter key down. And every time you take damage, you will manually heal automatically, if that makes sense. Auto heal is actually a skill you buy to use and it will automatically heal once you hit a certain threshold. If you mouse over this, it will show you that threshold. You can actually hold the enter key down though I'm going to hold this inner key down. Actually, I'm going to let this guy do some damage to me here. So if he's done damage, if I hit enter, it's going to heal me. So you can actually hold the inner key down and use that to heal up in combat. That will make, that will allow you to get into some higher level dungeons. That will allow you to get into some uh, fights you probably shouldn't be in. Like I'm able to take my melee character into say, um, the Earth God Dungeon. The Earth God Dungeon you should really tackle with magic. But if I follow the combat triangle and, you know, a lot of the things we discussed earlier have the right damage reduction, have all my armor upgraded, have all my stats in place, um, I can actually go into that and fight that dungeon with a melee character using the combat triangle to have the correct um, style of fighting against it if I have everything ready, which is usually going to be ranged. Um, so melee and range goes into the earth God dungeon. I can mow through everything in there, use the hold enter button method of healing, uh, with auto heal. Cause there are certain things that will just flat out kill you because you just don't have enough health and you can't hit the inner key fast enough to make it go. Um, so, you know, don't go in with 40 hit points trying to attack something that's going to hit you for 500 you're not going to survive but you could say if something hits for 501 and you have your auto eat all right let's say my auto eats 436 as a real example here and i go into something that has a chance of dealing 437 500 something like that i could attempt that fight manually healing through it now it will reset your attack so if your attack interval is kicking across and you manually heal by either clicking this or hitting enter, now make sure you click the button, click left, click this, and then hit enter. Don't just start hitting enter because it won't work. You have to click that first. Uh, but you can actually tackle bigger stuff. It will reset your attack interval. Um, so say something has a damage over time and it's fire and it just keeps ticking down. Those are probably not going to do enough damage to kill you, but they will use up a lot of health as you hold that inner key. You'll just watch your health or watch your food um, run, get used up really quickly. So be careful how you use that. It can get you into trouble, but it can also get you into dungeons that you wouldn't normally be in and maybe get some gear out of. <sighs> yeah, this video has gone on for a long minute. That will do it for this uh, video. Um, prayer and Slayer. There's not really a whole lot to add to this. Use prayer as often as you can. Uh, there's some really good prayers. They've added a few. I don't know all of them. I'm pretty much on all my characters at the end game portion. So I'm using everything down here at the bottom. But the one to note is this protect item skill or prayer. Aside from hardcore, if you're playing on adventure or standard, you have a chance of losing an item when you die. You don't always lose an item, but you have a chance of it. If you equip this protect item, it will burn a lot of prayer points off and it doesn't really give you XP for using prayer, but it will not, you won't lose an item when you die. Now, hardcore, it's not going to help you at all. So it's pointless there. But if you go into a dungeon that you're not sure of, you don't know if you can idle it. You don't know if you can uh, survive it. Equip that 
you know, turn that on and it will help you out. Uh, there's also protect magic ranged and melee. These reduce, I thought they were 85%, but I guess they're 80%. Uh, they reduce the chance of the enemy to hit you by that percent. Um, so this is chance to dodge, which goes against their chance to hit. You'll actually see that drop down. If I jump in and fight this guy and I say do protect melee, this chance to hit is going to go down to 20. So that's what that does. Those are very useful. I still use those on um, the high level stuff just because. There's also like uh, this, these different vision ones. They start off the strength and things like that. As you're leveling this up, use whatever you can. Like thick skin gives you melee evasion. Don't use that against ranged or magic. Um, but there are different, different things for different styles. Just try them out. Uh, you can get some damage reduction. There's a one. Uh, and then this one's a three. So you can use two at a time. Um, Slayer, there's not really a whole lot to say, except, uh, I guess the one thing I would add about Slayer, if I get the right button clicked, once you've maxed all, once you have all of your Slayer skills, and this, the master level is bought out, it's kind of a late game, very late game thing, but the Slayer helmet and, um, plate body gives you damage reduction it also gives you, if you notice on here, it says 3% chance to double items in thieving, 40% slayer skill, which at this point it doesn't matter, but then 20% slayer negation and 3% chance to double item loot in uh, combat. So you gain some thieving abilities with this thing too. So if you're hurting for money, like say an adventure character, you can equip that and get more money out of thieving. So that is... We'll now do it for this, ep well, video, not episode. Really, it's just a video. Um, that will do it for this video. Thank you for sticking around, and hopefully you found something that was useful. Um, I hope to put timestamps on this and make it easy to find things. And that will do it for this video. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.